but actually uh, laden in Aristotle's concept of this transcendent unmoved mover in as much as this, uh, this concept in, entails noesis noesios, that it's a thinking thing, you see, and the ultimate thinking thing, from that one could deduce, though Aristotle does not uh, uh, do it, it is implicit in the concept that you could deduce other properties of this God that fit the, 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 the Christian theological needs uh, in, the, in their definition of God. But that's, a, that's something that happened historically. That's something that happened and has debate surrounding it and, 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 and so on, you see. Uh, but it's an interesting thing that Aristotle's God is arrived at through an analysis of physics and astrophysics, literally, as having to be posited. But then he, he not only serves the purpose of being the first cause of uh, cosmic motion, of eternal motion, but also he is defined as... Uh, the ultimate thinking being, in other words, he is also Logos. So he is the, he's, uh, the to akinito kinun, the unmoved mover, but he's also noesis noesios. And the synthesis of these uh, two ideas seems to be uh, well uh, uh, connected. It seems to be a necessary connection. And then from that, many things can follow. Of course, there are, uh, some of you have been talking about Neoplatonism. Plotinus has also has a concept of God as to'en, the one which has simi similar characteristics to Aristotle's uh, uh, God. He's very aware of it. Uh, Plotinus says he was trying to uh, combine Aristotle and Plato. Of course, he wanted to preserve all of what he felt was the correct understanding of Plato that he felt was threatened and could have been lost. But uh, most of the commentators have said that he also is very aware of Aristotle's God and he, you, he, he, he has succeeded in a synthesis of uh, the best aspects of Aristotle's notion of God and, uh, and, and Plato's because Aristotle does not finish the uh, deduction. He establishes noesis noesios and he, uh, and he leaves it uh, uh, alone. Now, um, the Catholic Church is happy with Aquinas's deductions from Aristotle's noesis noesios, his gloss on logos. See, logos becomes nous, becomes noesis noesios, and then uh, becomes for, for Aquinas uh, in, intelligence, intelligere. And so uh, the, the Catholic Church feels that God is ultimately uh, rational. Now, the big debate in the Middle Ages, at the time, in the 13th century, with the schoolmen, with Aquinas and uh, St. Bonaventure and the others, was um, whether there is primacy of will or primacy of intellect in God. In short, today, uh, Aquinas says that will is derived from intellect. Intellect has primacy. Some of the thinkers felt that will has primacy. Now, Aquinas says, since God is rational, the ultimately rational being would naturally will the, the, the things that it reasons that are good to, uh, to be instantiated. Because existence is better than non-existence. Existence is always good. Non-existence is nothingness. Being is always better than nothingness. So existence is better than non-existence. Therefore, the ultimate intellect would will the existence of the good. It's very platonic, that notion, too. And so, if it would will the existence of the good, it would also desire the good. And this, this uh, benevolent will, this will directed to the good, is love. So you can, you can deduce the God of love uh, from the God of intellect. And I had mentioned to you um, uh, Pope Benedict. And uh, I have a quote from him that... Uh, I think fits nicely with this. Um, this is um, April 1st, 2005. Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, who would become Pope Benedict XVI just over two weeks later, referred to the Christian religion as the religion of the Logos. So I'll read this uh, little paragraph that uh, are his words about this. Christianity must always remember that it is the religion of the Logos. It is faith in the Creator Spiritus, in the Creator Spirit, from which proceeds 
everything that exists. Today, this should be precisely its philosophical strength, insofar as the problem is whether the world comes from the irrational and reason is not, therefore other than a sub-product, on occasion even harmful of its development, or whether the world comes from reason and is, as a consequence, its criterion and goal. The Christian faith inclines toward this second thesis. <clears throat> uh, thus having, from the purely philosophical point of view, really good cards to play, <laughs> uh, despite the fact that many today consider only the first thesis as the only modern and rational one par excellence. However, a reason that springs from the irrational and that is, in the final analysis, itself irrational, does not constitute a solution for our problems. Only creative reason, which in the crucified God is manifested as love, can really show us the way. In the so necessary dialogue between secularists and Catholics, we Christians must be very careful to remain faithful to this fundamental line to live a faith that comes from the Logos, from creative reason, and that, because of this, is also open to all that is truly rational. Here, uh, Catholics, uh, end, of, end of quote, Catholics can use Logos to refer to the moral law written in human hearts. This comes from Jeremiah, prophecy of uh, uh, the New Covenant, quote, I will write my law on their hearts. St. Justin wrote that those who have not accepted Christ but follow the moral law of their hearts, Logos, follow God because it is God who has written the moral law in each person's heart. Though many may not explicitly recognize God, he has the spirit of Christ if he follows Jesus' moral laws written in his heart. According to uh, Father William Most's ar article for Catholic Television Network, those who have the spirit of Christ belong to the body of Christ. He writes, quote, those who follow the spirit of Christ, the Logos, who writes the law in their hearts are Christians, are members of Christ, are members of his church. They may, they may lack indeed external adherence, they may never have heard of the church, but yet in the substantial sense, without formal adherence, they do belong to Christ, to his church." End quote. Here I want to put in that I think this is very uh, relevant to uh, the line in John the disputed line all the time where Jesus says, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so others say, well, does that mean you have to be a Christian in order to be saved? And there are two interpretations of this, and one is the fundamentalist one that if you're not a Christian, uh, you're lost. And the other is the ecumenical one where the moral law is written on one's heart, so a, a good uh, person who is secular or Buddhist or Chinese, not non-Christian or whatever, if this person is following the moral law, then he has the law of God written on his heart. So when Jesus says, uh, 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 no man cometh unto the Father but by me, he means, uh, by me, he means uh, by my moral law. And it would be human conduct that would gain entry into heaven, not uh, just believing in, 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 in Christ. Uh, well, you know, that's a famous theological dispute about the role of faith versus works and, and so on. So, uh, but uh, but uh, Benedict's uh, paragraph is fascinating, isn't it? Because he's saying that uh, ultimately there should be a possible dialogue between the secularist and the, and the Catholic and other Christians uh, because uh, the, the ultimately even the, even the dog, uh, the seemingly to a, to a secular, the secularist, a dogmatic Catholic would have to respond to uh, 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 appeals to reason, and he feels that there's a possibility of of dialogue because the principles of reason would be held dominant. Of course, uh, I mentioned before that later when he became pope, he made a similar uh, speech to this, uh, speaking about jihad and. Um, uh, the problem of violence in in, in Islam, and uh, the the you know the use of, of force, uh, 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 as understood, and he he quoted uh, a Byzantine emperor, the next to the last uh, Byzantine uh, emperor before the fall of Byzantium, who had said, uh, "What have uh, what have the Muslims given us except the sword and uh, and violence?" Which was a despair by this. Uh, it felt by this Byzantine emperor, you know, who was about to be overwhelmed. Uh, and he, he 